Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Musician from Hits Academy, a newsletter, coaching service, podcast, and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. Today's episode is titled, When Your Big Break Ends Up Not Being One. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hits Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I wanted to quickly give a shout out to the Mockingbird Foundation, which is a charity of which I am honored to sit on the board for the last 13 or 14 years. Uh, we uh, support music education for uh, underfunded uh, kids all across the United States of America. Uh, we just received in our, our latest uh, competitive grant round, we received hundreds upon hundreds of grant applications uh, from all across the country, and we will only be able to afford to support a fraction of them, uh, but you can help with that, actually, if you are interested in donating. We are, I'm, I'm fiercely proud, we have shockingly low overhead. We don't own a stapler, we do not uh, rent any office space. Um, we are, uh, yeah, it, we have barely any overhead whatsoever. So uh, at the maximum percentage of every single dollar that comes in goes directly to uh, the kids that we serve. So if you would like to go to mbird.org, uh, you can click on uh, donate and even $5 will help. So thank you to everyone who's already done that. And now, when your big break ends up not being one. I know that I have written and spoken about this story before on TEM, but it was a really important chapter, even though it was a short one, uh, in my musical journey, so I'm going to tell it again today. <clears throat> the reason that uh, I'm telling this story today is because uh, one of the main characters in this story, Cliff Colnott, uh, just passed away yesterday, actually, at the age of 76. Uh, Cliff Colnott um, was a, a conductor and, uh, and a producer in Chicago. He conducted the Chicago Symphony, the Utah Symphony, the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra, the International Contemporary Ensemble, or ICE, uh, thousands of TV and radio jingles uh, in the studio. Um, he, was, uh, he was phenomenal. Um, like phenomenal, like intimidating uh, ears, but um, but he was always kind, um, demanding but kind, and that's um, that's a dream to work with. So anyway, I did not know him personally uh, back when I was at Northwestern when I got the call to sub with the Chicago Civic Orchestra, which is the training orchestra for the Chicago Symphony. So at that time, I had never worked with him. I didn't know who he was. It was a contemporary concert, so all of the music was new music, and the uh, tuba parts were actually quite challenging. There was a lot of, um, there was a, a lot of uh, just a lot of moving around, um, a lot of highly rhythmic parts, and a lot of mixed meters, things like that. All things that are um, in my wheelhouse, and so um, before the dress rehearsal, um, I uh, got there uh, super early, as I always did, <clears throat> and when I got back there. Uh, to my uh, chair, um, the bass trombonist said uh, the conductor was looking to uh, was looking for you, and um, I've always been taught that's never a good thing. You don't really want the conductor to be looking for you. You just want to do your job and go home uh, in those settings. And so I was like, okay, I don't know what this is about. Um, but uh, I went up to the podium and I said, excuse me, sir. Um, you know, my name is Andrew Hitz, and uh, I'm the tuba player. And I want, uh, you know, I was told that you were looking for me. And he said, uh, yes, and he shook my hand, and he said, uh, I have recorded uh, the first two rehearsals, and I've listened to every note, and he said, I just want you to know uh, that uh, the due diligence that you are doing in that tuba section, uh, in that tuba seat, rather, um, is not going unnoticed, and I want your name and number to be able to call you with work here in Chicago, because you sound fantastic. And... Um, uh, I thought about cursing uh, out, out of happiness. Uh, I didn't, and I said, wow, that, that's, that's really amazing. Uh, and I, um, I grabbed a piece of paper, and I wrote down my name, and I wrote down my number. And, um, and then I, you know, I kind of floated back to my chair. Well, I then got back to Northwestern. Now, I'd worked with him for a couple of days, and I could tell that this guy was incredible. But I went and told my teacher, Rex Martin. And uh, Rex Martin said, um, you know, he, he kind of lit up uh, with pride for me. And he said, he said Andrew, the, 
Cliff Colnett has the best set of ears in all of Chicago, and he like you know he's he's like a major player in the radio and TV jingle, uh, which were that was huge in Chicago uh, back in the '90s, uh, and before that, he said that's a really 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 big deal. Congratulations! So now I'm really floating, right? Like this guy who is like a power broker, <coughs> excuse me, in Chicago has singled me out. I looked around. He did not go to anybody else's seat that I saw. He wasn't singling anybody else out. He just talked to me that day because I got there really early. Um, so I'm just like, I'm flying high. Um, and then fast forward um, a week and my phone hasn't rang, which is, you know, it's fine. Two weeks, my phone hasn't rang. Uh, a month, my phone hasn't rang. Uh, two months, my phone hasn't rang. Um, and then, yeah, at, at this point, my, uh, my phone number changes a few months later because, uh, I'm a college student. This is before college students all had cell phones. Uh, this was before this kind of thing was done over email. Um, I had an email address, but it was not the way that uh, business was done just yet. I mean, that was like just a few years later, long story short, I never got a single call to do a single thing from him. Now, I am quite positive from the stories that I know of him uh, and of my interaction that it was 100% sincere and he was not being nice. He thought that he could solve a problem of his, which was getting a tuba player who could play whatever he needed to quickly into a microphone and that I was that guy. And uh, I but, but my phone never rang. Uh, I, I played no gigs my entire four years at Northwestern. I mean, like two, I mean, like, no joke, like two, uh, three, four, whatever. I mean, it was like, it was paltry. Um, and, um, I was, I was devastated. As you can imagine, I was just, I was devastated. I mean, this was not a guy that was like, Hey, if I ever need somebody, this is like, this is one of the power brokers who says, I need people all the time and I'm going to call you never called. I don't know if you lost the paper. Um, I don't, <coughs> any number of things could have happened. So the moral of the story here is that you have to persevere because, um, you know, there's two ways for me to frame this at the time. One is that if I was worthy of that kind of feedback from that level of musician, then it meant I was doing an awful lot of things right. Uh, so I can either focus on that uh, or... I can focus on the fact that my phone wasn't ringing beforehand. It wasn't, didn't ring after that. I was still broke. Um, you know, it's like, you know, that's, that's great when you need to pay rent. Um, and <clears throat> I want to be very, very upfront. My parents uh, helped me with college um, and that's putting it lightly. So I, I wasn't like, uh, it, there was no risk of me being homeless. I want to be very, very clear. I don't want to exaggerate. But, uh, you know, I mean, when I'm like paying my rent or paying my phone bill or whatever it is, uh, I can't be like, well... This is like $40 short, but Cliff Colnott, who has the best set of ears in all of Chicago, singled me out amongst like the training orchestra, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Um, and so, yeah, that's, um, that, that's worth a few bucks, right? Um, no, no, nobody, nobody cares. So I just had to persevere. And now it's a great story because I, um, to say I landed on my feet is, uh, is quite the understatement with the way that Boston Brass and Dallas Brass and... And everything, um, you know, worked out after that. And it wasn't that much longer after, uh, you know, that subbing. I think that was like in 96 when I got that call that I played with Civic. Um, it was fall of 96. And then I went down to Arizona. It like it all worked out how it was supposed to work out. Uh, but the point is that you've got to persevere. And sometimes uh, what seems like a really big break ends up not being a really big break. And, uh, I, I had help with that. Um, you know, I, I definitely vented to my teacher at the time, um, who was very supportive, uh, you know, vented to my girlfriend at the time who was very supportive, vented to my friends, uh, you know, they all kind of helped me get through it, but, um, you know, uh, you have to abandon all hope for a better past. Uh, and that is, um, you know, I, I had wished a month in that I had gotten a couple of calls. Cause I also knew that if I could get, got the chance to go into one of those studios, I could crush it. That's nice. I never got it. You know, um, I, yeah, I just, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. So, um, so anyway, um, rest in peace, uh, Cliff Colnut, um, just, a an incredible musician with like shockingly good ears and, um, and, uh, fiercely critical, but kind, 
like uh, you know which it's like it's possible to be as demanding as cliff colnott was and to be kind and respected all the time um and so if you're not under the guise of being like you know fiercely demanding then um yeah you're either lying to yourself or you're just yeah you just need an excuse to treat people poorly be more like cliff Okay, this week's quote, by the way, if you can hear my voice, um, I've not played tuba in a week. Um, it's actually kind of amazing that I've only coughed a couple of times. I just decided it's been, um, you know, it's been a few months um, uh, since I recorded one of these uh, that I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm going to talk about my break and, and why I had such a long break, uh, maybe in the next one. Um, this one I saw that Cliff passed and I was like, you know what, I'm going to share that story and uh, grab a quick quote from Clark Terry. And then uh, and I'm just going to post it. So um, this week, this month, this quarter's quote is from a jazz trumpet legend, Clark Terry. It's three words. Imitate, assimilate, innovate. And they are in a very specific order. Imitate first, right? Everybody imitates. Then if you imitate enough, you assimilate it into your own, uh, into your own work, into your own art. Uh, and then... You eventually take that and somehow make it your own. This goes for the business side of things. This goes for the art side of things. This goes for improv. This goes for um, for written out music. This goes for absolutely everything. First we innovate, then we excuse me. First we imitate, then we assimilate, and then um, then eventually we innovate if we continue to have the courage to keep showing up and to uh, to take risks. So thank you to Clark Terry. Uh, thank you to uh, Cliff Cole. Not um, uh, my condolences and love to everyone who knew uh, and loved him. He definitely made an impact on me that week that I played under his baton. Um, gosh, that was almost 30 years ago because time is marching on. Thank you so much uh, to everyone for listening to, uh, to TEM. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate your, uh, your patience. Um, it has... Um, it's been a little bit of a stretch, uh, but I am here. I am, uh, I'm alive and, uh, I'm coming through the other side and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. So anyway, thank you. Love you all. Peace.